Welcome to another Liquid Bullet Productions. Today we'll be taking a look at the Hammersmith Nude Murders. The Hammersmith Nude Murders were a series of killings in 1964 and 1965 in West London. The victims, all young prostitutes. Nearly 70 years after infamous serial killer Jack the Ripper roamed the streets of East London, Jack the Stripper was stalking his prey in West London. Despite intense media interest at the time and one of the biggest manhunts in Scotland Yard's history, the case remains unsolved. The true identity of Jack the Stripper, unknown. Jack the Stripper has six officially listed victims, but it was believed there were at least two others. All his victims were found in a state of undress in or around the Hammersmith area, near the River Thames. Each one had been asphyxiated. Most had their teeth knocked out. The murder of known prostitute 21-year-old Elizabeth Fig, also known as Anne Phillips, on the 17th of June 1959 is thought to be Jack the Stripper's first victim. Found on a towpath in Chiswick in a secluded area known as Duke Meadows by police officers on routine patrol, she had been strangled and left lying naked next to the Thames. Her underwear, black stilettos and white handbag were missing. A proprietor from the pub on the opposite side of the river said on the night of the murder he had seen car headlights parked in the area around 12.05am. Shortly after, the lights switched off and they heard the screams of a woman. Pathologists concluded time of death between 12 midnight and 2am. Then we jump forward to the 8th of November 1963 and another known prostitute, 22-year-old Gwyneth Rees, who was also known as Georgette Rees, Tina Smart or Tina Dawson, was found approximately 40 yards from the Thames towpath, dumped amongst the rubbish of a household refuse disposal site. Unfortunately, she was accidentally decapitated by a shovel which workmen had been using to level the surface. The next 12 months would see six bodies found, all young women, all prostitutes, all found stripped naked and either drowned or strangled. Hannah Telford, a 30-year-old mother of two, who was also known as Hannah Lynch or Ann Taylor, was found on the 2nd of February 1964 on the Thames foreshore west of Hammersmith Bridge. She had been strangled, several of her teeth were missing and her underwear stuffed in her mouth and stockings around her ankles. Cause of death at autopsy was found to be drowning. Despite her injuries, this called into question, was this actually murder? An inquest into her death recorded an open verdict. 25-year-old pregnant Irene Charlotte Lockwood, who was also known as Sandra Russell or Sandra Lockwood, was the next young prostitute to be found dead on the 8th of April 1964 on the foreshore of the Thames at Corney Reach, not far from where Hannah Telford had been found. It was the discovery of Irene's body that made police realise they may have a serial killer on their hands. 22-year-old Helen Bartholomew was discovered a week after Irene on the 24th of April 1964. She had been strangled and dumped on top of a rubbish heap in an alleyway behind residential houses on Boston Manor Road, Brentford nowhere near the River Thames like the other victims. But, like previous victims, she was missing her front teeth, a recognisable trait of the killer. Police believe she likely was strangled 24 hours prior and her body stored, as Helen's body was covered in coal dust and paint flakes used in car manufacturing. This gave investigators their first piece of solid evidence 
Police reasoned that the paint likely came from the killer's workplace and began focusing on nearby businesses. Victim number four was 30-year-old Mary Fleming, who had disappeared on the 11th of July, and her naked and strangled body was found on July 14th, dumped outside 48 Berrymead Road, Chiswick. Neighbours reported hearing a car reversing down the street just before the body was found. There was also small paint flecks on her body. 21-year-old Frances Brown, also known as Margaret McGowan, Frances Quinn, Anne Sutherland, Donna Sutherland, Susan Edwards or Nola Rollins, was the fifth victim of Jack the Stripper. Last seen on the 23rd of October 1964, by another prostitute as she climbed into a client's car. Her body was found a month later on the 25th of November in a car park on Horton Street, Kensington. Like previous victims, she had been strangled. Francis's colleague provided police with a description of a car. They presumed it to be a grey Ford Zephyr. Francis also had the same paint flakes on her body. Jack the Stripper's final recorded victim was Irish immigrant 27-year-old Bridget O'Hara, also known as Bridie O'Hara or Bridget Moore. Bridget's body was discovered on the 16th of February 1965 near a storage shed behind the Hare and Trading Estate in Acton. She had been missing for a month as she was last seen on the 11th of January. Again, industrial paint flakes were on her body. These were traced to an electrical transformer near where her body was found. Her body showed signs of being stored in a warm environment, which the transformer would provide to, leading police to believe this is where Jack the Stripper had been storing the bodies of his victims before he dumped them. The investigation into Jack the Stripper was led by Detective Chief Superintendent John DeRose, and he was determined to find the serial killer. He had 700 premises searched, looking for a match to the pain flex and looking for clues to where the bodies had been stored. One match was found at a workshop in the Herring Trading Estate, which was opposite the electrical substation Bridget O'Hara had been found. In total, 120,000 people were interviewed, over 3,000 forensic samples collected and 7,000 suspects were interviewed, but no information on the identity of the killer was found. DeRose also had female police officers undercover on the streets of London, blending themselves in with the street workers, hoping to catch a killer. He also held a press conference and announced his team had narrowed down the suspect list to 20 individuals. Then, in subsequent con conferences, he reduced suspect pool to 10 and then to 3, hoping to shock the offender into thinking police were closing in on him. Months and months of searches and interviews and the case reached a dead end. After February 1965, there were no further murders and no other evidence found. There is speculation the victims were known to each other due to their underground party scene and appearing in pornographic movies. This is possibly where they may have come into contact with the killer. There are five suspects. Kenneth Archibald, caretaker. Mungo Ireland, a security guard, champion boxer Freddie Mills, Superintendent Tommy Butler of the Met Police Flying Squad, and Welsh convicted child killer Harold Jones. We will be taking a closer look at the suspects in the Hammersmith nude murders next time. <laughs>